Welcome to the Common Thread Podcast. This is your host, Tariq Ahmed. And I'm Howard the Pax Jr. And uh, we want to welcome you back to BU. Most of you have been, been here for a few months now already. And uh, our first episode this season is going to be on the government shutdown. <laughs> Very scary time. <laughs> so let us introduce our guests. First, we have uh, Neil Ganesha. I'm Neil Ganesha. I am a senior in CAS, uh, studying IR. And journalism. Then what's your concentration in IR? Um, foreign policy and security studies in Asia. Okay. Very cool. Awesome. Hi, I'm Tyler James. I'm a sophomore here at BU studying economics and minoring in the School of Management. Hello, everyone. My name is Issa Kenyatta. I am a sophomore here at SMG, and I'm currently a major in possibly finance. Okay, great. That's a... Nice combo for this topic, considering most of the debate about what's going on is sort of dealing with finance and economics and IR and the U.S. government. Um, so what's going on? Are we all screwed? Hmm. Should we be scared? Because a lot of people don't seem to be scared at all. I'm kind of scared. I believe we should. We do have a reason to. Um, I think it's really... Um, I think the government and the officials that are um, actually debating on this whole deal that they're supposed to be making are the ones who should actually be the worried ones. Mm. It seems like the people that are being affected are more worried than the actual leaders that are actually doing anything about it. Like, the votes are being held at, like, 2 p.m., 6.30 p.m. Like, there's no rush on anything. And the time limit... Oh, sorry. The time limit is serious because it's only two days left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do, do you, any of you all think that you know, come today's time on the 17th, where we are going to enter that default, or do you, do you all think that they have a good chance of resolving issues? I would like, like to say that they wouldn't be dumb enough so that's default, mm-hmm. but the way things are being done, you know, I can't say it's 50-50. It seems pretty nonchalant about it, which is really scary. Mm-hmm. So, Well, my thing is, is what, um, whenever with Congress and they try to pass something, mm-hmm. they typically like to be very dramatic and wait till the last minute. Because mm-hmm. remember, the last, the longer you wait, you kind of create a political pool as to like, the Senate, let's say, asks to, they have a bill here, and it's a time crunch, and so the House has to decide whether to um, accept it or decline it, knowing that they decline it, the default starts. It puts the pressure on the other side. So that says a lot about how we're trying to, how Congress is trying to operate this. They're trying to make sure they look good politically, but also get the country on track. And I think this shutdown is just the epitome of just why we're allowing in my opinion, I think people are allowing their own politics as far as, like, their power and their career to get in the way of what's right for the country. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people are getting angry because of that. But I do want to touch on one thing. I want to say that it's not all of Congress. Let's, let's remember that in the House of Representatives, it's not all Republicans, not Democrats. It's the radical Tea Party members that are holding the government hostage in many ways. I mean, it's not all Republicans. There are many Republicans who are trying to get this passed, and there are Republicans who are angry at the Tea Party for doing this. And so, um, unless the radical Republicans, in a sense, want to try to not throw us over the edge, um, I think we could get a lot more. Yeah, and just to clarify those facts for those who may not know, um, this whole debate and gridlock is based on raising the debt ceiling and also passing a new budget for Congress. And a certain faction of the Republican Party is... Refusing to compromise and pass a budget and raise the debt ceiling as part of that budget because they are upset that we have Obamacare in this country. So they are upset at something that has nothing to do with the budget and are using that as a debate tactic for the debate on the budget. Which, if you know, you consider the U.S.'s place in international economics, is a really, really dangerous and um, potentially catastrophic thing to do because uh, not only does our economy affect us, it affects everyone else. Exactly. So it's kind of scary. I think I think that's one of the reasons why this is so, you know, monumental at this point. I know that there's been a government shutdown before, but I think when you take into consideration that, you know, the economy still hasn't fully recovered from, you know, the 
the recession that happened in 09, you know, we're still trying to progress. We're still trying to get better. You know, so we're still trying to uh, get back to where we were before. Um, this is just not the time and it's affecting workers. Uh, thousands of people have lost their jobs. Um, right. I sort of on standstill right now. And on top of that, like Sharif, I mean, like three extra states, sorry. Um, so many other countries, you know, are affected as well because of the position that the U.S. holds. So, would you guys be able to sort of walk us through why this is so important? Because I feel like casually people know that this is happening, but when it comes down to it, we don't really know, like, why is this a bad thing? What happens if we don't pass a budget and raise the debt so Takers? So, as far as um, information I understand is that and not passing the budget, what's happening is that we're cutting off the benefits that are going to many Americans, such as the WIC program, 800,000 workers are, late, are furloughed right now, including my sister, who works for the White House. So she's sitting there waiting for a paycheck so she can pay bills. And these are Americans' lives that are at stake, just because a group of people feel as though Obamacare, one piece of legislation, is more important than the whole country. And my thing is that by holding the whole country hostage and making it so that there are thousands of other people's, possibly millions of people's jobs that are at stake because of the budget that might not get passed. But it's like, it, it kind of puts your priorities out of, out, of, out, of, out of whack, in a sense. You know, like, how can you, I couldn't sleep with myself knowing that I put a whole bunch of families out of homes and out of, like, jobs because I feel as though Obamacare is wrong, as opposed to passing and, like, America continues work on, you know, what it does as a country. And then going back and reassessing Obamacare, if it's really that adamant to me. I think one thing that we should point out, though, is, firstly, well, there are a few things we should point out. One is that Obamacare is technically called the Affordable Care Act. Scarily enough, a larger proportion of Americans are open to the Affordable Care Act than they are to, the mean to Obamacare. They're the same thing. People don't actually know it's called the Affordable Care Act. Mm-hmm. Secondly, Obamacare went through Congress, went through all the loopholes, including the Supreme Court. It's been deemed constitutional. I think it's. I think it's very scary that we're still caught up on something, or at least con- Congress is still caught up on something that should not be an issue of contention anymore. And the fact that they're still caught up on that makes me pretty afraid about what you know what's to come for the budget, especially if we default. Default would mean a lot of bad things happening. We have a lot of um. There's the whole the Fed's pumping in money to financial institutions in the U.S. and around the world. Um. I'm not exactly an economic. Um, well, we do have an we do have an economist here. What exactly happens if we default on our on our loans? What if we can't raise the debt ceiling? Well, first things first. Of course, the um, government-funded institutions will go down as they have already throughout the shutdown. But not only will people lose jobs, but America will no longer have much value for the dollar. So, of course, the value of the dollar is going to go down. And once that goes down, which it's already gone down tremendously in the past anyways, but once it completely continues to go down, that's where catastrophe, I believe, strikes, Um, where prices will still go up, prices will increase, but people will not no longer be able to afford the simple things in life as far as... this This is based on a complete worse scenario. Okay, so just, for, you know, to connect the pieces for those who aren't very econ savvy, mm-hmm. the government doesn't pass a new budget, the debt ceiling is not raised, so we've maxed out our debt currently, mm-hmm. and we're defaulting, meaning we can't pay back the loans we've taken. So mm-hmm. right now, the government is operating at a huge deficit, mm-hmm. and the way our government functions is we borrow money from people by selling bonds or whatever, you know, we're doing. Uh, and we're running on that. Mm-hmm. The moment we can't pay those people back, we lose credibility because we we can't pay our money back. It's like exactly. we're bankrupt. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and that's going to make our currency really bad. Mm-hmm. Really, okay. And a lot of people, like we've been stressing, will be affected, not only just government workers, but also students, because a lot of students take off loans through the government, um, federal loans and things like that would be fault. A lot of people will not be able to continue their education. A lot of schools get funding from government, research institutions, um, military. My boyfriend overseas isn't getting paid right now, but he's mm-hmm. still being forced to work 12-hour shifts. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to have a con- catastrophic impact on everything that has to do with the U.S. And 
Sorry. Um, you can go ahead. Oh, I'm not okay. Okay, and also I'm just going to say that international markets as well will uh, feel the effect. Also, people who have money invested in the U.S. Um, as far as um, stocks and hedge funds and things like that, and also um, people who actually do business with us. Okay. I'm just going to also remind us about the stock market. I mean, if investors feel risky about what's going on, they've already shown last week, you know, the Dow dropped about um, about 200, not two, no, not the Dow. Yeah, the Dow dropped about 200 points mm -hmm. um, because investors felt scared about what's going to happen. I mean, you have CEOs sitting um, in front of the companies like, I don't know what's going to happen as far as its budget. I don't know what's going to happen to the economy. Why should, I, like, what's my next action? And I think that puts a lot of pressure on CEOs to find out what, what's the best obstacles. Will we continue, like, you know, working as we are now or do I risk, like, making a lot of losses. So I think it's huge. Like, everybody's looking at Congress right now. Why do you think that more Americans aren't upset and furious about this? Because it seems really, it seems really unreasonable to use our financial security and stability as a, as a card in this, like, game about like Affordable Health Care Act. Like, that's a separate issue, and they've clearly tried and failed to pass that, but why are more people mad that we have part of our political government, like, threatening the future stability of our lives as, like, a, as, like, a gambling piece? That's what they're doing. I, I don't understand why other people are really, like, riding the streets about this. Well, honestly, I think it says a lot, too, about Americans not being informed about the issues that are happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we don't, if a lot of people see it this way. If they don't feel the effects right now, then why is it my problem? It's the reason we don't go out to vote for me. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people who don't see the big impact of how it, on the, on an individual level. And so, I think, I mean, it's even shown in, just as, um, my friend here said about the Obamacare and the Affordable Health Care Act. People don't even know, they don't think there's a difference. Like, <laughs> and it's, and it's fear mongering as far as the Republican side. There's a lot of, like, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of, like, misinformation thrown around. And so unless you're going to sit down and actually learn this yourself, mm -hmm. and a lot of Americans don't, maybe because they're trying to put food on the table, you know, and other pressing issues in their lives, then they're not going to feel as concerned. They're going to think Congress is going to work it out by themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, I feel like the most likely scenario is they're going to pass their temporary debt ceiling increase and pass, like, a working budget for a few months and then do this whole thing over See, again. That's that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm most fearful of, I think. And I, I, it's just going to continue. This monkey business is just going to continue. So we'll be nice so far right then. Yeah, yeah, they pushed this back from, uh, when was it, March? Right, yeah. That's when yeah. the last big furlough uh, incident occurred. So, um, um, whoop, whoop. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Whoop, whoop. Um, I was just going to uh, get your point of view on something, um, Issa, I know you said that your sister has been affected, you know, as uh, your boyfriend Tyler have. Um, have you gotten, just to give the listeners like a first-hand experience, you know, has she told you anything about how she's felt particularly or like what is some of the, um, I mean, we all know that it's negative for anybody who has a government job because they can't work, but has she expressed any of her feelings to work through on that or some of the inconveniences? Um, so my sister is about, she's in her, almost in her late 20s, and I want you just to picture this, Howard. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to work, and you're trying to, you know, you're struggling, just getting into the market, you know, out of college, and, like, you just got an amazing job. Mm -hmm. um, and now, all of a sudden, it's taken away from you. So now you're in a city where you don't have a lot of family. Mm -hmm. Now you have to somehow pay bills. You have to provide for yourself. You, have, you don't want to ask for money too much for your family because you know everyone else is still trying to get by as well. Right. And so... Now, um, you have to maybe live with an employee, you know, a, a fellow coworker, mm -hmm. and try to live until hopefully this madness in Congress is passed, you know, right. because those senators and representatives and the president are still going to be paid by the we pass the a budget or not. And so you get furious. We're not furious, but you get frustrated. You right. get very frustrated about what's happening in American <clears throat> politics and the government today. And, um, Right now, I'm actually going to New York because she's living with my grandmother now, hoping that the shutdown is over soon so she can get back to work. Um, and so these are people's lives we're playing with. And that's why I urge us again that how can you hold Americans' lives hostage because you don't feel as though a piece of legislation is up to your power. Right. 
And, and this just as a, as a note or a fact, uh, in the previous uh, government shutdown in 1996, when Newt Gingrich was Speaker of the House, they did retroactively pay people, but some, you know, and I'd venture to say most American families live paycheck to paycheck, and they don't have that luxury of saying, oh, we can wait for two or three paychecks because the government is, you know, messing around. Uh, that's money they need right away. Um, so I think we have a, a general idea of <laughs> this gloomy scenario. Uh, absolutely. Do you guys want to give us your, your closing thoughts or last two books? Should we should we put down by canned food? <laughs> What's going on? Go ahead, Tyler. Um, I really don't think the government will go as far as to actually make us suffer through all that to like the worst case scenario. Um, I do want to say some, one thing um, that Issa just mentioned about how the president and the Senate and all of them are still getting paid no matter what the rest of Americans are going through. And I think that says a lot about our government system as a whole. And I, I really stro feel strongly that, you know, if we're going through it, they should go through it too so they can feel, you know, the struggle that we have and actually be pressed for time and feel the pressure to actually do it. Because I feel like they're very comfortable. And it's like, oh, it's no biggie. You know, we still get paid. But, like, unless you're actually in another person's shoes and you actually see what's going on, only then can you actually see the impact of what's going on. Um, hopefully, my I have faith that they will pass something within the next few days. Um, and we won't have to go through any of that. And I'm sure it will be something temporary. Um, unfortunately, but hopefully that it'll be a start. I think our, I'm going to say one more point and then I'll pass it on, but I think one of the more pressing issues about the debt ceiling is that we have a debt ceiling mm -hmm. and that it's still constantly increasing and I think that's one of the bigger problems. It's like a ticking time bomb and we just keep rushing it up and like, oh, changing the time on when it's going to go off instead of actually addressing the actual issue. Um, that is all. Um, I was gonna say I agree with the um about the uh, with the con Congress and senators and the president being I feel like they're a little detached. Um, while in in Congress, John Boehner and um, the, the other Republicans have been crying, we should listen, we should listen to our constituents. But I feel like there's a certain amount of t detachment from the constituents because they don't feel what the constituents feel. At the end of the day, they can continue doing what they're doing, and they're pretty much unaffected by what their decisions do to the rest of the people. We I don't know if I mean, people seem to have forgotten that we're actually living with the effects of the sequester right now. The sequester did take place, and, you know, Congress is completely fine letting that happen. I'm scared about the same thing happening with default, because it does mean that government spending goes down a lot, mm -hmm. which is which is something that some people in Congress want. It's not going to be a good thing. Um, I, yeah, I also do think that in the end, you know, the frustration of... The uh, most of the Senate and the Congress will come, you know, will bring about a deal, but it's just scary that it has to come to a point where everyone's so frustrated. They're just mad at each other, and it just, you know, that that causes a bill. It's not for the good of the American people at the end, the end of the day. It's a good, it's a good of their own, for the good of their own political, you know, agenda. Yeah, agendas. And I'm just, I'm, I want to see what happens next year in 2014. Hopefully, people will show up mm -hmm. and you know, vote accordingly, and we see what happened this year. But otherwise, it's going to be the same thing again and again. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and honestly, I would, my thoughts on it is really in our darkest hours when we find our light. And right now, it takes sometimes a dramatic, you know, problem for us to cause attention to what's happening in our government. You know, for the longest, Americans are generally complacent. You know, we don't really, people don't go out to vote. I mean, we have, I remember last time I had number of almost half Americans go out to vote, you know, and so, like, it, it says a lot about how we view, although, we also have Americans who say they hate the government, like they don't feel as though it's, it's reliable. But most of us aren't voting, and so I feel like this is a big, this is a big, you know, chance for us to see the error of our government and to be able to make that difference. Because you know, although this is a very dramatic, you know, and problem we're going over, it also is you can find a light in this that this is drawing people's attention to what's happening in our world, waking us up, and we're learning to take control of our country to make it better for the next generation. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for coming on. Hopefully, um, in two days' time. Talk about this again. Yeah. We won't have the worst case scenario. Together, but um, until then. Until then, by Cantu. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, also, real quick, I just wanna. 
uh, shout out our other two hosts who couldn't uh, make the show, the, the premiere, uh, Greg Wilson and Amanda Dow. They should be on the next one. We're going to make sure it happens for you guys. All right. Stay tuned.